Hello and welcome back to SciTitech. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a very unique liquid metal, which is a eutectic alloy called Galenstein. Let's get started. <laughs> To create galenstein, you will need to combine these three chemical elements to form a eutectic alloy, which is a metal that melts at a low temperature, such as 11 degrees Celsius or 51.8 degrees Fahrenheit. And what you'll need is 70% gallium, 20% indium, and 10% tin. Okay, so now I'm outside and I have all my items ready to create galenstein. I'm going to go ahead and take my pot, place it right about here, like that. And I have my thermometer where I'm going to take some measurements. Fortunately, uh, fortunately, indium, uh, fortunately, tin has a higher melting point, so it goes up to 271 degrees Celsius. And I'm going to melt this first, and then I'll melt the indium. And then I'm going to melt the gallium. Of course, gallium, you know, will melt in your hands, which is very easy. And I've already pre-melted it a little bit, just so it can slip out of the out of this uh, vial. So I'm going to go ahead and take the tin and start melting the tin. As you can see, tin is already starting to liquefy. Okay, so the temperature is ridiculously hot. Let's see, 100. Whew. Okay, it's 186. Uh, too, hard, too hot to measure and I'm burning my hand and I'm oxidizing the tin. So you can see the tin is getting shiny, which is oxidizing, which is not what I want. So I'm just gonna go ahead tin liquefied right here. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my indium. I'm going to go ahead and take my indium and pour my indium in. Ah, see that just melts instantly. That melts instantly. Now, for the grand finale, I'm going to take my uh, gallium. That's going to melt instantly. There we go. Let's see if I can get a measurement on that. Wow. How interesting, the chemical reaction between indium and gallium caused the temperature to drop. And now the temperature is back up again. I find that very interesting. That makes sense because when you combine indium and gallium, the crystalline structure between the two metals gets rearranged into a random order, which then causes it to remain a liquid and lower the temperature. Same concept if you were to add salt and ice, it also lowers the temperature and forms a liquid. I find that very interesting. So that's extremely hot. Now, since it's a uh, galliston, galliston can be on your hand. I'm not gonna touch this with my hand because I'll burn myself. So I'm gonna go ahead and cool it down in the swimming pool. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take this like that. And theoretically, if I cool it down, it should actually still be liquid. So I'm just gonna go ahead and place this back pot right here like that. Don't touch 
in the pot, it's not hot anymore. And this is still liquid. Now let's go ahead and touch it with my finger. Hot on the edges. Ah. I can touch this. And it's not even it's not even hot. Yeah. It stayed liquid. So I successfully created Galliston. So I'll go ahead and pour this on my hand. Well, that feels so cold. And as you can see, it's shiny and pure. No oxides. I want to go ahead, pour it into the vial. Impurities. You can see there's some impurities, like this is all slack. I can squeeze it like that to squeeze out some of the uh, leftover tin, which I believe is actually tin, so if I squeeze it really tight like that, and you should have some tin metal that's right here. And I don't want that. Okay, so here it is. My, my, uh, gallium, my gallium stem that I've created. Now I want to go ahead and take a uh, temperature. We do know what that says. So I'm sure it's going to be at least the temperature of outside, the ambient temperature. So it's going to be the ambient temperature. Sure, if I put this on, it's going to give me the same ambient temperature. And the light's going to be some touching here. Okay, I find that kind of interesting. It feels cool to the touch, but looking at the temperature, it seems to be the same as ambient temperature outside. Maybe a little warmer because I've touched that. So it's about like that. Interesting. Now what I've noticed with Galliston, it wets the surface, that's because it contains gallium. But it doesn't uh, wet as badly as uh, the uh, as pure gallium does. And I can see little beads of it, which is interesting. Yeah, it doesn't wet as much as uh, pure gallium would do, nor does a uh, combination of the uh, indium and indium and gallium indium and gallium compound. So with this hand. I'm going to go ahead and pour it in. Let's see, I'm going to do it with this one. It seems to be a little more pure, I think. So I'm just going to see how much it wets my hand. It stains. You see it's a little gray here. It's been pinching it. So I just want to see... See, it's not really wetting the uh, test tube too much. And the weight, yeah, I can feel the weight. It has a uh, weight to it for sure. All right, let's go ahead and pour it back in. Just go like that, go like that. Yeah, it doesn't wet my hand and stain like pure gallium would do, or even the, uh, yeah, see, it doesn't wet, doesn't stain my hand as much, which I find very interesting. For my previous video, I've made the gallium and indium, 65% gallium, 35% indium. In my previous video, I've made this one, and watch the difference. You can see my hand is not very stained, and that's using the, uh, Galliston mixture of the three metallic compounds. Now we pour it in this hand. Okay, 
Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead, pour it in. This feels a little heavier, which makes sense because it's more Indian than what the other one has, so it has a little more weight to it. And I'm just swishing around my hand a little bit like that. Feels the same except slightly heavier. And now I'm going to go ahead and pour it back in, and you can see the inside of this too. It's wetted. Gallium is very messy, and watch when I pour this back in. See, it's already on my hand more. So I just scrape it back in, like that, try to get all of it back in. Put the cap back on. And there, you can see the difference. It's a little bit grayer here than here, so you can see it's staying differently than the other. And there you have it. Now you know how to make gallon stin. As you can see, I try to put it under hot water. I can feel the liquid inside when I shake it. And when I turn it like that, I can feel the weight difference. I can feel it sloshing inside, but you can see it's still wet in the plastic. I place this in hot water to try to get it to be warmer than the melting point and then hope it, and then by doing that I was hoping that maybe it'll not stick to the uh, surface of the plastic but unfortunately it does the only metal that doesn't do that is mercury mercury will be a future video of mine so stay t stay subscribed for that and you'll be able to see me make experiments with mercury but yeah, liquid mercury is the only metal that will be liquid at a very low temperature at minus 39 degrees Celsius, and then it freezes at minus 40. But uh, even at that temperature, and even warmer, it stays liquid and it won't uh, stick to surfaces or anything. It doesn't stick to anything except for her amalgamation with other metals. So mercury will be a future video that I will show in a future video. So as you can see, Galveston is really an interesting metal. So I have some interesting experiments I want to do with this metal. Not sure what, but I definitely want to do something with Galveston. So there you have it. I hope you learned something new, and don't forget to like and subscribe, and of course click on the bell icon to be notified for future Sci-Tai Tech videos. Till the next tech, goodbye.